Is this a beautiful picture of Radha and Krishna behind you there? Yeah, thank you very much. I do that. Uh, I like to do that on purpose. It's a little yeah. my sneak attack. It's my Krishna promotion sneak attacks. I'll be talking <laughs> about business stuff or whatever, but I sit right here on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 21 of Successful Vaishnavas with Coach Nick Pereira from Canada. It's time to get inspired. Join us as we celebrate devotee success stories, preaching, business, community development, leadership and personal growth, all from the point of view of Krishna consciousness. Our goal? To help you to make your life successful. Hare Krishna, welcome back. It's another episode of Successful Vaishnavas. And today we are interviewing Coach Nick, Nick Pereira from Canada. Um, he's been a very successful business coach and quite recently has become a devotee. And it's been an interesting, um, interesting to see how he's integrated Krishna consciousness into his business. In personal news with me, well at the time of... Um, Releasing this podcast, we're coming up to the festival season, so Balaram's appearance day is just around the corner, as well as Janmashtami and Radhashtami, and then after that, before too long, it'll also be Karatek, so that's exciting. Um, in personal news, in terms of successful Vaishnavas, I've um, begun work on a new course, which is a course basically about how devotees can take advantage of the internet to um, develop a business that's connected with Krishna consciousness. So it's really um, ex describing the essential steps to take if you want to um, create an online business similar to successful Vaishnavas. Um, you know, how to set up, you know, how to identify your audience and the topic that you want to teach to that audience. Um, how to get in front of the, that audience, those people, as well as how to, um, you know, develop, build an email list and um, ultimately create um, products that can be of value to that audience. So that's something that I've been working on. I hope um, to release that shortly. I expect it'll probably be another couple of months before it's ready to be released, but I just thought I'd let you know about that that coming up, if that's something of interest to you. Um, you know, I've had a lot of experience in developing successful Vaishnavas as a Krishna conscious online project, as well as working with different clients and all kinds of different businesses in the general area of website development and marketing, with um, Facebook advertising and YouTube advertising. And things like that so I've got a lot of experience in that and I'm hoping that I can share that with devotees and devotees can use it in a way that can help them to one create income for themselves and f and and develop you know get money that they can use for Krishna conscious projects um, as well as find a way that they can make a living in a way that's actually Krishna conscious you know just like Prabhupada set up the system that he wanted devotees to sell books and by selling books you make money and with that money you can provide for yourself as well as um, have money to buy more books and to develop Krishna conscious projects. So this um, this new uh, course that I'm creating is with, has the same intention. It's how we can set up a business that you make money at the same time that you're spreading Krishna consciousness rather than having to go and make money somewhere else and then, when you get spare time, you you know do your Krishna conscious preaching. The idea is to set it up in such a way that you can put your full attention into helping people um, in a Krishna conscious way, and at the same time, you know all your needs are met, so your attention is completely aligned and focused. So um, this is, this can be helpful whether you're you know you have a service that you think will be helpful for devotees. 
in any area. It could be in health, finance, personal development, uh, you know, or directly um, some Krishna conscious training. Or it could be a business where it's something that's attractive for outside people, but through that business you can connect, connect it back to Krishna consciousness and um, help those people who may not know much about Krishna consciousness now to help them come closer to Krishna. And so on that topic, now it's uh, the perfect time to introduce um, the interview for today, which is with Nick Pereira. And he's a devotee who's done exactly what I was just talking about. He has a business of business coaching. So what he does is he trains people how to run their business effectively, how to get more clients, how to make more money, um, how to be good at selling. Um, he particularly focuses on spiritually minded people. You know, um, people who are particularly in the area of helping others, like personal development, um, coaches, perhaps some um, health practitioners. Um, so people that have got a big heart that really want to help people. So those are his kind of clients. And he helps them to run a business so that they can make a living by helping people in this way. So it's been very interesting because as he's become a, a devotee, you know, quite recently, he's really integrated Krishna consciousness into his business. You know, he's shaved up. <laughs> uh, he wears tilak. Uh, whenever he does a video, which he does many videos almost every day, he has uh, pictures of Radha and Krishna in the background. And he often talks about his japa and the importance of, um, you know, s spiritual sadhana. And so in this, and he, he's even changed the name of his uh, Facebook group to uh, Sangha. I forget the beginning part of it. Uh, Freedompreneur is the name of his his program, which we'll, we'll put links to his website um, in the show notes. And that will be over at uh, successfulvaishnavas.com forward slash Coach Nick. Uh, and also whatever episode number this is, I can't even remember, I think it's episode 21. So it will be successfulvaishnavas.com forward slash 21, um, or whatever episode number this is, you can also get to it there. Um, so a very interesting story about someone who has taken their business and converted it into a Krishna conscious business. He's found a way that he can maintain his identity as a devotee without any compromise. And he's able, he's been sharing Krishna consciousness in a way that makes sense for his clients, that adds value to them, but also helps them to come closer to Krishna. So that's um, a really inspiring example. As well as his business, as a business coach, he's also just opened a preaching center um, in, I think it's New Brunswick in Canada, and so it's very interesting hearing about his experience of starting something, uh, a new preaching centre, and we'll, we'll be keeping in touch with Nick over time to see how, how it develops, you know, from these early days, um, from time to time we'll catch up with him and see the progress of his preaching programme. So Nick is an extremely generous person, um, I first met him when he reached out to me, he'd somehow or other come across successful Vaishnavas and he got in touch and we spoke on Skype and he said that he liked the idea behind successful Vaishnavas and you know he gave me a lot of inspiration and he also gave me some uh, really good advice um, through the training that he has in his Freedompreneurs coaching program uh, which is really helpful and he's just got a really good uh, outlook on how we can add value to people's lives and get paid for it without feeling like we're sort of cheating people or feeling like we're compromising or something like this. Uh, he's he's a person of integrity and uh, I really appreciate that about him. So you can hear for yourself right now as I interview Coach Nick Pereira. Hare Krishna, this is Krishna Das here for another episode of the Successful Vaishnavas podcast. And this time we're doing it in video as well on Skype, which is a, a new thing. Thanks to uh, Nick's inspiration here. <laughs> so today we are uh, interviewing um, known as Coach Nick, Nick Pereira. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right. So this is um, Nick from Canada. And Nick's a really interesting person because he's actually uh, like a internet celebrity, I would say. He's um, got a coaching business that he does a lot of um, 
work online and um, you know he's interacting with a lot of people through his business and um, and I, I get a lot of inspiration listening to his classes and learning from him. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to meet up with Nick and uh, hear about you know his business, your business, Prabhu, and how it connects with Krishna consciousness. And I know that you definitely um, you link it together a lot, which I really like. You know, it's not like oh, I do my business over here and then I go to the temple and do Krishna consciousness here. You know, you've got a very integrated approach to the the whole thing. And you've recent, recently started a center. In yes. um, it's Christian name. What's the name of the place again? Saint Saint John, New Brunswick, in Saint, Canada. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, it'd be nice to, to uh, probably if you could just introduce yourself, give us a little bit of a background, and then um, you know tell us about your business, and then it would be interesting to hear your experience opening a new temple in the West. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be here and for what you're doing. I love your project. You know, we were able to connect a while ago, Successful Vaishnavas. I think it's wonderful, you know, and anything we can do as devotees to inspire each other and help each other grow in our Krishna consciousness, uh, I, I'm just all for it. And I think it's I think it's a wonderful thing. Uh, a little bit about myself. So I um I, from a young age, I was always drawn to a spiritual path. I actually grew up in a Catholic environment. I went to Catholic school and uh, I really resonated with Jesus, uh, but I never really got the, uh, I would never really got into the church aspect of it. It didn't seem to resonate with me fully. And I remember in grade nine specifically in religion class, I was asking the religion teacher a bunch of questions. And he basically told me that I needed to be quiet and have faith, and that was it. And he basically called me faithless because I was asking a lot of questions. And I remember getting like upset and kind of being like, you know what? I, I don't know about this whole God thing and this whole religion thing and spirituality. So I put it all in a box, and, uh, and I tucked it away. And it was about that time that my life started to go off track, <laughs> I would say. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, you know, typical sort of teenager, at least here in the Western world, uh, you know, got caught up in, you know, partying and girls and drugs and all the, you know, whatever high school type of stuff. And uh, and eventually over time, uh, I had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I started my first business when I was 17 years old. And there's something about entrepreneurship that's quite interesting uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship and spirituality. See, as entrepreneurs, we have to rely on a greater, uh, we have to rely on something greater than ourselves. There's a trust factor that comes to, with being an entrepreneur. Uh, so as I started going out and building my business, I actually ran into myself. I ran into a lot of challenges and struggles and I couldn't make my business work. And so I ended up, uh, through many years of struggle, I ended up coming and meeting a coach and I hired this coach on not really understanding too much about coaching, but she said a few things to me, uh, in, in a meeting we had and she said, Nick, there's two things to be to grow a successful business. One, you got to work on your mindset. If you're not willing to work on your inner world, then forget it. Just forget the outer world changing. It's not going to work. And the second thing she said is you need a strategy. If you look at anybody that's successful in business, they have some kind of model that they're working in and you should learn to master a model. So that made sense to me. I hired my first coach and I got started in the process. Now, what was interesting was that she had a tremendous faith about her. So sort of secretly, she also started turning me back on to God, right? <laughs> and uh, it's a little bit of what I do in my own business, right? So it's a little bit of, you know, I could see how that she's influenced me so much. Now, she was a, from a Christian perspective, but she was, uh, she understood that God is God is God and you know that there are different ways to approach God. And so through this through this growing of myself and really diving into personal development, I started going to all these personal development trainings, I started going to all these seminars, watching motivational speakers, I still felt like there was something missing in my own life. I was like, ah, like I'm like I like it, I'm motivated, but there's something missing and I couldn't tell what it was, but I was like there's something missing, but I didn't know what it was. 
And so eventually I started to draw these correlations between these big successful motivational speakers and these, um, you know, sort of um, um, business coaches and people teaching success principles. And I started noticing that some of the principles were the same in spirituality. So I really started to dive down my own spiritual journey. So I started back with reading the Bible. I then spent some time in Buddhism, uh, you know, studying the teachings of the Buddha and the Buddha sutras. And then I, that's where I met some Hare Krishna devotees on the street. And they were doing book distribution on the street. And I ended up buying Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. And I was so drawn to it. And I read Bhagavad Gita. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> this is this this is it. This just makes sense to me. I felt it in my cells. Like I was like, even now that I'm talking about it, I'm getting the you know the shivers, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> this is home. This makes sense to me. And what I loved about Prabhupada's Gita was that he didn't hold back. He just said it. Look, this is the way it is. And some of the concepts and some of the things that he brought up were very uncomfortable, and that's why I knew it was home because I knew that it wasn't all fluff. Mm. But this was it, and so. Uh, so what ended up happening is I started, uh, I was in a place uh, in St. John here, New Brunswick, where there is no temple, there is no devotees, there is there was no Krishna consciousness. And uh, so I started just watching YouTube and I started listening to the Maha Mantra and I started to, I didn't even know what who Krishna was, but I was like, hey, there's a blue guy with a flute and he's really cool and he sings Hare Krishna and I started just doing it and I was really drawn to it. And then circumstance had it uh, where myself and my wife, Sarah, we ended up going to Toronto for a couple of years. And that's where I met uh, Bhakti Mart Swami. And Bhakti Mart Swami, he's the GBC for ISKCON here at, in Canada. And he's the, the, the resident Swami at the Toronto Temple. And so I <laughs> when met Bhakti Mart. he's not walking all over the place. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, yeah, the walking monk, right? So, yes. So I met the walking monk and I started, uh, he invited me to be part of his plays. So I started doing service by being part of his plays. Then I started taking Bhakti Sastri course and I started uh, attending temple and that was it. I just started picking up the uh, practice of chanting and then I uh, started doing service with Bhakti Marswami, which I still do to this very day. And uh, and that's been my Krishna consciousness journey. And it's been a very quick journey. That was only just a few years ago. And and here I am, uh, you know, and I now work with uh, with Krishna devotees. I work with devotees uh, on teaching uh, devotees as well as non devotees how to grow their coaching and healing businesses. And spreading Krishna consciousness is a type of healing or coaching mm -hmm. service in its own way, right? Like, yeah, totally. you know, it's not exactly, but it, it's, it's <laughs> you know, it's definitely an elevated platform. But it is, um, it is understanding how to go out there and sell. And Prabhupada was the master at this. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a master salesman. I mean, if you watch Prabhupada go out and watch his videos – and the way that he built ISKCON and the way that he empowered others to spread Krishna consciousness, there's a lot that we can learn when it comes to growing our own business and growing Krishna consciousness uh, around the world. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so um, tell us a little bit more about your business. Like You, you said that you're, um, you coach coaches. Is that the basic idea? Or you train coaches? Yeah. Just tell us a little bit more about what exactly it is that you do. That's right. So exactly what I do is so my business is called the Freedom Pinners Club. And uh, it, it talks the, the main purpose. I talk about freedom on three different levels. So first, I talk about freedom on sort of a material level, getting ourselves to, you know, simple living, right? High thinking. I, I've adopted that into the Freedom Pinners Club. And I really teach that and say, let's simplify our life so that we have time to explore other aspects of life. So in the material world, you know, especially most of us who are householders, we have to make money, we have to, you know, these are the these are the obligations that we have and we have to do our duties, right? This is part of part of Krishna consciousness is we have to do our duties. So what I teach is how to build business uh, where your whole life isn't spent working. So you can get out of the rat race, you can get out of the corporate environment, you can leave the sort of government industrial um, ways of them running the way, and we can get into more free lifestyle. 
Once we're able to do that, then we could speak about we could speak about freedom on sort of a second level, which is freedom of expression, you know, and, um, you know, it lays it out right there in the Vedics. Right. You know, we all express ourselves differently. Some of us are more workers, mechanical in nature. We're more you know, we're good at building things. Some of us are more, um, you know, entrepreneurial. We're going to move resources around. Some of us are more, you know, the warrior type. We're going to yeah, we're going to police. We're going to, uh, you know, we're going to um, be the Chatriyas and we're going to go and, and, and be the warrior. And some of us are the Brahminical type. We're going to be teachers. We're going to be uh, influencers in this way. This is what I call freedom of expression, understanding where you are, understanding your nature, and then learning to use your nature in the world to be of service to, to Krishna and to everyone else around you. So that's the second level, because I really find that I, for myself anyways, find a lot of joy being a teacher. And when I'm teaching, I, I find myself lit up. I find myself very joyful in the process. And I think that if we all do our nature, then there's a natural joy and freedom that comes with that. And of course, the the, the third level uh, is, you know, understanding that we are spirit soul, understanding that we are not our business and we are not these things that we do in the world. So we're going to do them. But to always remember that we are a spirit soul and that we are not the things that we do, but we are the spirit behind what we do and to live from that place as best as we can. Yeah, that's nice. So it's just progressively going up, you know, I guess it's a little like the hierarchy of needs, you know, with Maslow. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, the basic requirements of living in this world and then more of a self-expression and then beyond that, that's you know, right. going to the spiritual understanding. Nice. That's right. And so and, and you know, and we, you know, uh, I in my own experience so far, it's not to neglect one or the other, but to bring our Krishna consciousness to each, you know, to each uh, moment. Right. To, to bring uh, to bring our Krishna consciousness to to what we do, to our families, to our work. And in that way, we can really be part of society and interact with society. But by our own energy and our own understanding, we can also elevate the people around us. And I really believe that, you know, we could create a Krishna consciousness, a God conscious society just by simply going out and doing our work within Krishna consciousness. Because, you know, there's something about a Krishna conscious, this, a Krishna conscious devotee. There's something about a devotee where other people look and go, Oh, there's something about this person, right? And, you know, they ask questions, right? And so I use my business um, as a way to spread Krishna consciousness. And I do it very openly, too. Like, you know, as you know, I, I integrate the teachings of the Gita. I integrate the teachings of Prabhupada into business principles. Mm. Um, and this way, I'm able to reach people who aren't Krishna conscious or who aren't devotees yet. But introduce them to the principles of spiritual development and growth and once they get a taste for it then they go oh well nick I, just through our relationship they get to know so even like if you're watching the you know if you're listening to the podcast you'll see but if you're watching even the way i set up my screen right i have radha krishna here so i've got my business logo but i also put radha krishna and you know i joke and say that's sort of my sneak attack to spreading krishna consciousness so <laughs> People may be listening to me because they want to grow their coaching and healing businesses and being able to generate more sales. And I'm going to give them that information, but I'm going to use spiritual principles to, to share how you can go out and build your business, but still not be attached to your business. So therefore that you could still not pick up the karma from your business and you can do it in a way which actually still elevates you and people around you. Yeah, no, a question that I have is um, you had this business before you met devotees, is that right? You were already doing this coaching business? That's correct, yeah. yeah. So I'm curious, like, you know, as you've become more into Krishna consciousness and integrated more of it into your um, business, you know, there would there could be a fear, you know, that devotees have that, oh, I don't really want to talk too much about Krishna, people might freak out or something. So you've been very upfront and integrated it a lot into your business. Have you had any pushback? Has anybody sort of said to you, oh, you know, keep your beliefs to yourself or anything? Or have you, you know, what's your experience with that? I'm really curious. Yeah, that's a great. Well, first of all, it's pretty normal. I had the same fear. 
right? I had the exact same fear. I tried to keep it separate, right? Like, oh, well, I'll do my Krishna consciousness here and then I'll just do my business. But uh, you know what? I've actually, my business, since I've been openly speaking about Krishna consciousness and just integrating it within the business, my business has grown exponentially, wow. right? So uh, yeah, so I, I encourage all devotees out there to, you know, Prabhupada had no fear, right? He just went out there and said, look, this is what it is, right? And, you know, Prabhupada actually said that if a sincere soul goes out and preaches Krishna consciousness, that Krishna will send everything that person needs to support him. And from my experience so far, that has been absolutely true. So in my business, what I've actually noticed is that what's come, uh, what's been attracted to my business is actually more people. They're not necessarily Krishna conscious. They're not devotees. But they are definitely on the spiritual path and journey. And so it actually makes the business a little bit more lucrative because people to come to the Freedom Pinners Club, not just to learn about their business, but also to grow spiritually. And it's a nice segue into Krishna consciousness. Mm. So I have some people who are working with me who are now chanting, right? Yes. And they're chanting, you know, they came to grow their business and now they're chanting Hare Krishna. And they've gotten the benefits of, of chanting the Maha Mantra. And, um, so, so uh, my experience is that that fear that we experience is quite normal. I experienced it. Uh, but, you know, just you have to have faith, right? Let it go. Just trust Krishna that if you go and integrate Krishna into what you're doing, Krishna will open up the doors for you. And yes, I'm not going to say that nobody, I haven't had anybody like be negative towards me, but I have had some people leave the, my world or leave my my space, you know, because, uh, you know, it was, you know, they're, they're not, they don't want that. And that's okay. You know what, for the for the two people or three people that left, Krishna sends 10, 20 or 30 yeah. more. So, you know, right, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I guess it's one of those, I guess it's one of those principles of business too, you know, when you really stand for something, you attract more people of that nature. And you'll also repel a few people, it's, uh, you know, polarizing, type of thing. They say, you know, what is it love me or hate me? There's no money in the middle. That's that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. We've had um, you know, but but overall the response has been very positive. Um with a few people, like I've actually had one client that said, Oh, you know, it's going too spiritual for me and this is not why I joined. And I said, I totally respect that. It's you know, this is not but this is the way that I'm going and yeah. This is the way that I'm going and I'm not going to not I'm not going to not go there, right? So, I'm going there, I'm going there and that's it. And since I've I've actually decided within myself or maybe Krishna blessed me with some courage to say, you know what? I'm no longer going to hide who I am and what the path it is that I'm on. Uh then in actuality, my life both spiritually and materially has improved. It's just all integrated and it's aligned. It's not like you're sort of having to have a split personality or something as you can just be yourself and it's so much more powerful when everything's in one straight line yeah i want to get up in the morning and i do but this was my goal and this is what it means to be a freedom preneur in my mind is i want to get up in the morning and just live my life and i don't want to think about oh i shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that or i'm gonna hide some aspect of my life i'm not i don't push krishna consciousness hard like it's the same thing in the way I teach sales. I'm not a hard seller. I don't hard sell Krishna consciousness and I don't hard sell my business. Uh, what I do is I, as best as I can is I try to sincerely and be as sincere as I can go out and serve people and meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've watched a lot of Prabhupada videos and I've watched, I listened to a lot of Prabhupada lectures and Prabhupada was so good at meeting his audience where he was at, where they were at. Mm. So if he was talking, let's say to a Christian audience, he wouldn't just like, just say, Hey, you gotta, you know, you gotta give that up and come. He would even say, no, this is not this. That's material. I'm Christian. I am Hindu. I am that's material. What we have to get to is the essence. And in the same way, if we don't go out and hard sell Krishna consciousness or hard sell our businesses, People will get turned off by that. Mm -hmm. But if we find out what, what is going on with someone, 
you know, maybe someone's going through something in their life. Maybe they're going through a hard time in their relationship. Maybe they're going through a hard time in their finances. Maybe they're going, uh, maybe they're having some health challenges. Then you can present Krishna consciousness as a solution to that. Then they are more able to, they, they're more curious about it because it's something that they want. Mm. Then once they're there and they, they see how Krishna can bless them and heal some of their, their, their challenges, then just they already, it's like they, now they have the higher taste. They go, mm. oh, and now they begin to go, well, imagine if I really took to the practice <laughs> yeah. and started following the principles and started chanting. And, you know, Prabhupada says it's a process. And so in that way, I try to introduce people slowly and let the process take over, right? Let, you know, Krishna will do the rest. I think we just have to just be there when we're needed to be there. And just sort of Krishna will take over and help, the, help them where they need to be. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I really like the way that, um, you know, like you've, you've got your concept of freedom preneur. <clears throat> and yeah. you're, you're giving the example here that's like, well, this is my expression and those that want to come along they can come along and those that it doesn't fit, it's no problem. Let them, they can follow their freedom <laughs> as well. That's right. Yeah. You know, if, if we really want freedom, we have to give freedom to others, mm. right? We have to give our, if we, when we truly give ourselves permission to be free, this is who I am, right? You know, and, and this is who I am and I'm going to express myself and I'm going to, and I'm going to sing Hare Krishna and I'm going to dance and I'm going to go to Kirtan and I'm going to do these things then naturally we just give other people to be free too. And so some people will go, oh, well, that's not for me. And that's okay. You know what? I've actually had some people that I've worked with, they haven't taken up Krishna consciousness, but they've started going back to church. Right. Right. And, I, you know, that's fine, right? Because e they're finding God in their time, in their way, in their yeah. path. Right. So, um, you know, so that's fine. Like, you know, that's okay. Right. As long as some, as long as everybody finds, uh, you know, God in their, in their way, we're, we're all going back, right. Eventually, you know, <laughs> yeah. eventually. So, you know, uh, you know, so I just think that when we give ourselves permission to be free, naturally we give other people permission to be free. And in that way, they're actually more attracted to you mm. because they can feel free around you. So they don't feel judged. You know, and they don't feel like, oh, I have, right? And remember, like, again, I, um, you know, there's a wonderful book, um, and I might mess up the name, but correct me, uh, Miracle on Second Avenue mm, yeah. by Mukunda Goswami. You know this book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I just so love that book. And, you know, uh, the way that Mukunda Goswami describes his own journey with Krishna consciousness and how, you know, he describes his relationship with Prabhupada, Prabhupada, um, you know, allowed everybody to sort of be themselves, mm. but he inspired them through his being. Like he was such an elevated soul, right? He was so enlightened that it was just natural that we, you would want to be like, oh, well, whatever he's got, I want to, mm. <laughs> right? right? You know, and he's got Krishna. So now I want Krishna, right? So in that way, um, the more that we become Krishna conscious, the more naturally People around us will just be like, whatever that person's got, I want it too. And then when they ask you, well, what do you got? And you say, well, look, I've got Krishna. They'll say, well, what is that? And they say, come on, come on, come on out. Let, let me show you what a kirtan is. And I mean, once <laughs> someone's experienced a kirtan, like what's, there's no turning back, right? <laughs> uh, and just sprinkle on a little prasadam with that. That's right. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sprinkle a little, you know, a little prasadam with that and they're, they're gold. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I think it's such an important point, you know, like um, when we want to welcome people into Krishna consciousness, you know, we don't want to feel forced, you know, people like to feel that they've got their freedom. And when when I'm secure in my own being, it allows yes. me to have that security with others. And often you find that those that are very controlling, it's because they've got some insecurity of their own that's yes. getting in the way. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And we have to look at that. We have to look inside of ourselves. Right. And and that's what the chanting does. Right. If we really take to our chanting practice, it cleanses our heart and it'll cleanse us of our insecurities and our fears. But it's also normal to have. I mean, we're human. Right. Like yeah. we're, we're all human. Just trying to, you know, just trying to figure it out and, and trying to, you know, understand. And I think that 
um, you know, as long as that we are sincerely putting in the effort, you know, it all comes down to that sincere effort, mm. right? You know, we sometimes we get caught up on the material, how it looks and mm. are you doing RT the right way and are you doing this the right way? And I know like it's good to have the traditions. It's good because it keeps us uh, on track and it keeps us moving forward. But, uh, you know, we should always remember the essence behind it is mm. that are we being sincere? You know, are we coming from bhakti? Are we coming from love, right? devotion? Yeah, just like in the Bhagavad Gita, when it says "patram pushpam palam toyam," it's Krishna's not accepting the leaf or the flower, but it's the devotion. That's so, right. You know, all of That's these right. external things are, are, can be really helpful, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. just a sort of a, a expression of our, you know, our sincerity. Hopefully. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And we can try to be as sincere. And, and as time goes on, we, we, we grow in that. And that's how I teach. That's what the Freedom Printers Club is all about. So we are going to have business. Business is part of this world. So why not do business with devotion now? Now, now let's learn to do business with devotion, right? You know, I remember I was reading um, George Harrison, right? I had asked uh, Prabhupada, uh, you know, should I become a monk? You know, should I, right? And he was so willing to do this, right? And Prabhupada said, no, you make music. Make music for Krishna, right? So for me, I do business. I, I'm, you know, I, I teach sales. I, I'm good at it. I like it, but I, I try sincerely to do it for Krishna and give the results to Krishna. Yeah, it's funny. I was listening to a, um, an interview with uh, Russell Brand, and he asked oh, yes. Radhanath Swami, he "said You know, should I become a brahmacharya? Should I move into the temple?" And Radhanath Swami just laughed <laughs> and said, <laughs> "I don't think that it's your dharma to become a monk." <laughs> That's right. That's right. You 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 got to do your dharma, right? You got to do your work. I was just just last night at the you know as you mentioned, we started the St. John Krishna Center, and uh, I was giving a, a class last night. We were doing program last night, and he said this thing: do your work. Don't try to you know. Krishna says do you know? It's better to do your work imperfectly than do someone else's work perfectly, right? So don't, you know, if you're not, if your nature isn't to be a monk, don't try to be a monk, right? If your nature isn't to, you know, be a business person, don't try to be a business person because you won't find joy in it. You mm -hmm. won't find the essence. Do your dharma, do your work. Trust that Krishna has put you exactly where you need to be so that you can learn, grow, and evolve and focus on yourself. Focus on, when I say focus on yourself, meaning focus on your own journey and, and and just forget the rest. Like just be there with Krishna, and he'll take care of the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just I guess yeah. it's uh, about listening to Krishna in our heart too, isn't it? And what how he inspires us. Because many times we're doing things which is because society tells us that's the way it has to be, or our families sort of set us up that we have to have that occupation or whatever it is. Um, that's right. And actually, Krishna's in our heart, and if we listen, we can get guidance, and we can do. Sometimes we can do things, and we feel like, yeah. This is the right thing. You know, you just have that, you know, you know it in your, in your stomach. That's right. You, you just know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know it. Like Prabhupada says, he says, it, when did you become Krishna consciousness, your life becomes perfect because Krishna becomes the guide in your life. And and for me, I it's a knowingness within myself. Oh, this is it. This is, you know, because I battled with that too. I thought, oh, geez, do I, want, do I have to become a monk? Do I have to give up family life? Do I have to do all these things? But it didn't feel right for me, right? So I'm like, no, this is not, this is not for me. This is not my dharma. Mm. But I'm really good at business. I'm really good at generating sales. I'm really good at teaching other people how to do this. So use the gifts you've been given. Again, it's you know, do your work. Yeah. And I think sometimes we think we bring our material attitude to Krishna consciousness, right? This is we, we, we go, oh, well, we should be brahmachari. We should be monk because they're elevated in, 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 in Krishna consciousness, which they absolutely are. You know, but I remember my friend Purujit Das told me, he said to me, you know what? He says a bus driver could be more elevated than a monk. He says, because if that bus driver is always chanting Hare Krishna and is always engaged in Krishna in his heart and mind while he's driving the bus mm. and the monk is not engaged in it in his heart and mind, but he's wearing the orange robe. He said, in actuality, the bus driver is more advanced than the monk. Yeah, so sure. don't get caught up on the material exterior. Some people's dharma is to be a monk and live that way, and some people's it's it's to be the bus driver. So be the bus driver, but be it in Krishna consciousness, and you'll find joy in it. <laughs> nice, yeah. Like Prabhupada says in the, I believe it's in the Bhagavad Gita purport that it's better to be a 
humble sweeper of the street than to be a charlatan um, meditator or something. <laughs> like, that's right. Same, yeah, yeah. We should. That's it. That's exactly it. It's the same principle. There's a wonderful story, um, you know, about uh, about uh, uh, um, you know, very uh, elevated yogi, right? You know, and uh, and this woman was coming to coming. She would cross the river. Uh, to give him his milk every day, but she would show up late a lot. And so one time this, this, you know, this monk, uh, you know, Swami, he really, he, he kind of chastised her really like, Oh, why are you always late? Like, you know, you can't be on time, you know, blah, 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 blah. And she said, well, you know, I have to wait for the river boat. And sometimes the river boat is late and da, 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 da. And he says, Oh, you know, if, if, you know, if, if I could show up on time, you could show up on time. <laughs> he said, all you have to do is, you know, you have to have faith. You just, Chant Krishna's name. Chant, can't Krishna's name. Chant the names of God and walk across the river, right? <laughs> and so, so in the story, the woman begins to show up on time. <laughs> and so this this yogi eventually asks her, "It's like I've noticed that you keep showing up on time. Like, what's what's changed?" And she said. Well, I took your advice. Now, this is a very simple woman. She was very, you know, just a, you know, like, right. And she said, well, I took your advice. So I chant the whole God, names of God and I walk across the river. And he couldn't believe it, right? This elevated yogi, right? He couldn't believe it. He's like, I have to see this. So they go down to the river and she starts chanting the names of God and starts walking across the river. And she says to him, Come. And, you know, he grabs his dhoti and he lifts it up because <laughs> he doesn't want it to get wet. And, you know, and 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 he goes in and he and he can't walk across the water. And she says, oh, ye of little faith, you told me to, you know, you told me to chant the names of God and walk across the river. And you're not and you're unable to do it. Right. So that's, you know, so she is Krishna conscious because she was just so in faith. Mm. And even though this. This uh, yogi was, he had all the exterior, you know, he would sit in lotus position and he would, right, you know, and he would show that he is so spiritual, but in actuality, he didn't even take his own advice. Right. So right? He, knew, so, he knew the right things, but he, he wasn't able to actually put it, to apply it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So he knew what to say, but he wasn't able to apply it. And so in that way... Um, we should just do our work and, and be grateful and be thankful and chant Hare Krishna and do our do our work and yeah. don't worry about the exterior piece <laughs> of it. Yeah, I actually, um, some years ago, just before I started this podcast, I was um, I went to Experts Academy over in California. And oh, as, Brendan, as was, uh, Brendan Bichard, Bichard, yeah. yeah. Yes. And so when I was flying back from there, I just kind of got some inspiration to write a song. So I, I wrote a song, it's basically called do what you love for Lord Chaitanya. And the gist of it mm. is that everybody's got some unique talent and we have to find that. And, you know, where do we get our inspiration? Use that for Krishna. And, um, yeah, it's just reminding me of that. And also I also wanted to mention about how this idea of freedompreneur that you had, I sort of stole it. And um, Oh, good. You know, we, when we spoke last time and took the idea of the Krishnapreneur. That, oh, I love know, it. You know, we're looking for um, using our initiative in a way to serve Krishna. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we're Krishnapreneurs, right? We're taking our, we're taking, I love that. I think that's wonderful. You know, why not, right? Like, why not do business, you know, if you're going to do business, right? If you're, if that's your nature and you want to do business, then do business, but do it for Krishna, right? Remember, yeah. it's about your heart. It's about your devotion. And here's the secret. Okay, here's a business tip, right? Here's the <laughs> secret. If you do it for Krishna, uh, you'll find that you'll be successful in it. If you put your faith in Krishna in your business, you'll find that Krishna rewards your business and rewards you very nicely. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Uh. So, um, yeah, um, let's just move over and talk about the new center. Um, sure. It'll be quite interesting. And also, uh, well, one thing I'm interested in from the perspective of, the, of this freedompreneur is mm -hmm. how do you, um, you know, juggle your time in terms of uh, running a center as well as this business that you've got? How does that work? <laughs> yeah, so... Um, uh, because I don't, I don't see them like as separate. I see the the Krishna Center and the I see the Freedom Preneurs Club as the maybe the the, I, the Freedom Preneurs Club is to help people in the business realm become Krishna conscious and become God conscious in their life. Uh, and the Krishna Center is now like uh, the same mission, but like a different, let's say, a different spoke on the same wheel. Mm. 
right? So, so the so the Krishna center is now directly, you know, it's kirtan, it's programs, it's Bhagavad Gita, it's right. So, uh, so basically, we started a Krishna center here, and what we did is we started just with a weekly program. So we started a weekly program. Um, we don't do our Sunday feast here, which I know most people do. Uh, I know a lot of temples do the Sunday feast. We do our we do a Tuesday night because that was the night available that someone donated their space to us. So we went. With it. <laughs> that, so that was Christmas impressive. arrangement. <laughs> That's right, totally. Christmas said it's Tuesday night, so we said okay, it's Tuesday night. So what we do is we get together. Very simple program. We do kirtan. We do a little Bhagavad Gita class reading. We do more kirtan, and then we serve prasadam. And um, then what's happened is so some we, some regulars have started to come out and started to gravitate towards Krishna consciousness. And uh, then what we did is we ended up um, just get, it's all by donation. So we ended up uh, the somebody said, "Hey, I've got a room inside of a wellness center." And the room is empty and, you know, a hundred dollars, you could have the room for your Krishna group if you'd like. And so I put it out to our, our, our little core group and said, look, we've been offered a room for a hundred dollars to have our own center. Would, would you guys like it? Everybody said yes. And so we took the room. And so that's it evolved to that. And then so we put up uh, uh, pictures of Chaitanya, Radha Krishna, Lord Jagannath. And we've got Prabhupada. We ordered some books, so we've got a bookshelf in there. We've got some book uh, books in there now, and uh, we ordered some uh, some japa japa beads and and japa bags, so we have that. And so now we've kept this Tuesday night program going, but now we've decorated the room. It's a very beautiful room, and so Prabhupada said that anyone any sincere soul who goes and starts a center, Krishna will send other souls to help. Nice. So myself and my wife, Sarah, we started the center and we started growing the center and some um, Western followers came. But then there was a, a couple from India who just recently has moved to St. John and they started coming and they brought a few of their friends and they know how to play drum. Oh, yeah. Nice. Right. So we were just using cartels. But now they've added the drum. So now we have a kirtan team. <laughs> and that was by Krishna's arrangement. Nice. We didn't even know these people. It was so interesting. I did, uh, um, I did a uh, Gora uh, Purnima here. And this lady from India said she has grown up in India, never attended, never attended a festival. She came to St. John, New Brunswick in Canada. We're a small <laughs> town of 60,000 people, right? She came here. And she said she couldn't believe she saw Hare Krishna's here. So she came out that night and it was and then the next the next week her husband and a couple friends came out and they started playing the drums and we have a kirtan now. And now and now Bhakti Mart Swami um was very pleased and uh he is now actually coming out. He's actually arriving next week. And he'll be leading some programs at our Krishna Center. And we also have some brahmacharis from the Montreal Temple who are coming. And so just by the network that we have of, of devotees, some devotees are now coming and they're helping by amplifying it. So, nice. you know, we just went and started. We didn't really have a plan, to be quite honest. We yeah. just started. There was no, there was nothing. Myself and Sarah just wanted a group to do kirtan with and to chant with. And so we just started. And just over the months, more people started coming and we put a little Facebook so you could check out our page. It's St. John uh, Krishna Center. And you and we started putting a page together and we started inviting people. And we didn't even at first call it the Krishna Center or anything. We just called it Bhakti Yoga, uh, Mantra Meditation, uh, Yoga Philosophy and, um, and, uh, and Vegetarian Food. So very easy to accept for the Western audience, right? You know, and then just as time came, moved on, then we, you know, we gave birth to the Krishna Center. So it's been very organic, very, right. very organic. So, yeah. in, in the and very... as far as balancing the time, it just, it's a few hours a week. That's it. It's just a few hours a week. It's no different than, uh, I mean, we all go to temple. Yeah. We, we should, you know, I think we should all be going to temple or getting together with some devotees a few hours a week. So if you're listening to this and you're living in a place that doesn't have, um, maybe doesn't have a center, doesn't have a temple, 
you become the temple. But that's what Bhakti Mar Swami told me. I said to him, I'm going back out to St. John. Is there a temple or anything out there? And he said, you're the temple now. <laughs> and, I said, and I said, okay. So I just took that as my instructions to start a temple, start Sara Center. Yeah, nice. So that, that first um, Tuesday night program, you said someone offered you a place to, to hold it. Did you like advertise it or anything? Or you just, just started out quite organically and just through your small network that you have? Yeah. Just very organically, we put together a Facebook uh, event page, and because so so I do teach sales and marketing, right? So I have a sales <laughs> and marketing, so I know how to spread the word on things, right? Yeah, yeah. So I did put together a Facebook page, and I used my own influence that I have with with on on the online presence that I have. So I used that to let people know about the Krishna Center, and so they. To me, they just go hand in hand. It's the same mission. We're spreading spirituality. We're mm -hmm. spreading spiritual culture, um, whether we're doing it in our business or we're directly doing it through a Krishna center. Um, that's what we're doing. And so I put together a Facebook event page and started inviting people through the Facebook. And, and a, a good marketing plan is to actually market to people who are into yoga. Right. Uh, and, and, and so if you present to people who are into yoga, uh, like the physical yoga, most people who are practicing yoga, at least in the Western world, um, don't understand the philosophy. So they're doing it as an exercise. But something has led them to yoga. Mm -hmm. And so, so – but and a lot of them understand that there's more to yoga, but they don't know – they don't have access to that information. Mm -hmm. So in actuality, if you go out to the yoga studios in your area and you tell them you're presenting yoga philosophy and bhakti yoga, it's a very nice, easy way for them right. to go, oh, this is yoga. This is mantras. Okay, we like mantras. Yeah. Great. You do mantras. And then you just slip in a little Bhagavad Gita class and then <laughs> you start to go, oh, this is the source of yoga. Right. That's how I present. I say, okay, right. so it's like yoga. Do you know where yoga comes from? Oh, well, you know, I think it's an Indian thing. It's an Indian. Yeah, I said, yes, it's got its roots in India. And here, check out this book, Bhagavad Gita, where it talks about the four different types of yoga systems. And and then they go, oh, wow. And then you can now introduce them to uh, to Krishna consciousness through the practice of yoga. Nice, yeah. yeah so once again, like you were saying earlier on, um, meeting people where they're at. And that's then, right. Just gradually, um, you know, helping them to go to the next level from from there. That's right. And culturally, we have to remember that when we're depending where you are in the world, culturally, it's a little bit different, right? Everybody's a bit different. You know, one of the things I learned from Prabhupada was when Prabhupada started, I believe, and and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when he started the the that Los Angeles temple, and it might I might be a little bit off with my facts here, so excuse me if I am, but. They kept the pews. They bought a church yeah. and they kept the pews. And he was okay. He said, keep the pews and let them keep their shoes on. Yeah. Because that's what they know. So that's fine. Keep the pews. Let them sit in the pews in the church. Let them keep their shoes on and chant Hare Krishna. And he even wanted them to keep the organ. Oh, yeah. The there you organ. go. Yes. So there yeah. you go. You know this. Yes, yes. I've heard of he it. Wanted... Yeah. It seems that the devotees um, got fired up and. Didn't follow all of that instruction, but you can see Prabhupada's broad vision there. That That's it's like, right. well, they, they like to go to a church, so let's keep it as a church, but we'll That's put right. Krishna there, you know. That's right. Just you know, we'll just put Krishna there and we'll use it. And to me, that's why he was, uh, you know, uh, he was very, like I said, like if you actually study Prabhupada, he was uh, uh, just, he just, I mean, he just knew how to spread it. Because he never, from my perspective, mm. he never forced it. But he said he kept it at its essence. This is about love of God. Yeah. And if you take up the practice of chanting Hare Krishna, this will lead you the way. And Lord Chaitanya spread the Hare Krishna mantra freely, right? He was the most liberal avatar, right? <laughs> he spread it to everybody. He said, here, freely chant Hare Krishna. So why don't we take the same way and just spread the Hare Krishna mantra and don't try to necessarily make it all about, you know, coming to the temple mm -hmm. and doing these things. That will happen as they get the higher taste and they get, wow, I really like this chanting and I see the results in my own life. Then naturally, they'll say, well, 
let's go to the temple and then you know you know then let's put it on Ratha Yatra and let's you know, <laughs> you know and, then, and then it builds so don't you know from my experience and this is a general sales principle don't be too anxious to sell mm. but educate educate slowly let people take to the process at their pace mm. and then they won't leave because they're coming at it at their pace but if you try to make it go too fast uh, it could be scary and then you know and then and then people want to leave they don't want to stick around yeah it reminds me of um, a sales principle or a business principle that nobody likes to be sold to but everybody likes to buy that's so right the process of marketing and sales is to is to make people um, give them the space that they can choose themselves that they want to do something. That's right, yeah. And people need to choose Krishna consciousness, right? If we try to force it upon them, then they're, then then we become no different than any other religious group out there that is trying to force upon the people's ideas. And that's where actually people don't want to come to religion. Yeah. Because the people generally, they don't want to be forced to do things. But when you make a choice to come to something, then you have a free will in that. Mm. And uh, I, I personally want to respect the free will of people, hence the freedom pinner part, right? Like, <laughs> I, I really believe in freedom as a whole. So we should respect people's freedom. Yeah, that's a really good point. Actually, I just wanted to go back to a point that was raised up earlier um, mm -hmm. when you were saying that when you got into business, then you came up against yourself. And I think that this is one of the great things about business or you know, any kind of challenging endeavor is that um, we get confronted with the, you know, our challenges. Like you know, yeah. in one sense, you could say, well, <laughs> I was just thinking, just sit and chant, and then you have to deal with your mind, the biggest challenge of all. <laughs> but, That's right. Um, but my point is that sometimes, you know, if we just um, kind of cruise along in life and do kind of like what everybody else is doing, we might not really come, we might avoid some things that we could learn from. Whereas if we take yes. up some challenges, you know, especially for Krishna, then uh, it's a wonderful personal development. Because um, like when I started Successful Vaishnavas, there's kind of two elements to it. One was um, general personal development, how we can become more Krishna conscious by applying whatever technologies are out there, whether it's the seven habits of, of Stephen right. Covey or if it's some teachings from Tony Robbins or whatever, or directly yeah. from Bhagavad Gita, you know, out for right. our personal bit development. And then from the other side, it was like, how can we spread Krishna consciousness in innovative ways? There's the kind of the two elements. Yeah. And through one um, business mentor I had at one stage, he said that he had a business partner who was really into self-development, but they found that it's a hard thing to sell because it's too abstract. But if you yes. have a context for it, like, all right, do you like for me the best personal development apart from getting married? <laughs> <laughs> <Of course. laughs> yes. from, apart from that, was you know going on book distribution, walking up to people, and selling them books. You know, it's like, wow, do you get confronted by yourself, and you know yes. your, um, you know your ego, your limitations, and so. This is an example of how you're you're doing something for Krishna, which is outside your comfort zone, and because of that, you can really grow in your personal um, development. That's right. I I totally agree. You know, it's it's um, we should take on some challenges. Like Prabhupada said, you know, a devotee will take on all kinds of anxieties for Krishna, right? And then remember, it's all about your heart, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about what's going on inside of you. So if you take on some challenges, whether it's growing your business, you know, relationships, right, all of these, these are all challenges. But if we take it, if we bring Krishna consciousness to it, it actually becomes, uh, it, Krishna transforms it or spiritualizes it. So it becomes actually our practice. It actually helps elevate us, right? And so um, don't shy away from challenges. Take them on with some gratitude. You know, I, I said, just be grateful because Krishna's arranged those challenges for you, for you to grow. Mm. Every time I come up with it against a challenge, whether in my business, in our relationship, in our finances, these are all these areas. I always remember that Krishna uh, is wanting me to grow. Mm. So therefore challenge, you know, it's no different than going to the gym. If you want your <laughs> muscles to grow, you have to, you have to feel the burn of the, of the working <laughs> out, right? You know, you have to feel that burn. So in the same way, we have to feel the burn of these challenges so that we can grow from them. And there's a wonderful saying, you can either get bitter or get better. <laughs> and Krishna, right? And don't get bitter. Don't get bitter in your Krishna consciousness journey. 
you know, there's challenges. Krishna consciousness is not easy. You know, chanting 16 rounds a day, following the regulative principles, doing our readings. It can become very difficult. There's Our ego and our self will challenge us because it's it, – Look, the, the, the body is designed to just want to be comfortable, right? <laughs> the body's just like, oh, let's just, you know, why chant? I can binge watch Netflix and, you know, right? <laughs> you know, right? You know, right? You know, right? You know, there's, let me scroll on Facebook more. Or, you, know, you know, you're like, oh, I should chant. Oh, I'll just scroll a little bit more longer on Facebook, right? You know, that's because, you know, we're identified with the body, right? And the body wants to be comfortable, but when we more identify as spirit, then we can, let's say, override the body or we can control our mind. Look, the best practice for anything is, the, is, is chanting. I mean, chanting has totally transformed my life because my mind now more than ever is under somewhat of control. I'm not going to say that I'm some elevated yogi or to say <laughs> that it's under control, but there is more of a control now than ever before, which has allowed some beautiful things in my life to happen. Mm. And as time, I remember a time where I chanting one round was like, oh, holy <laughs> smokes, you know, and now I chant my 16 rounds and, and, and I chant more than that. And I just chanting and chanting. And there is a, an inner power or peace that comes with that. And it's a beautiful thing. So if you really take to the chanting process, it also helps you. Um, it also helps you in all aspects of life. Yeah. Like all aspects of life get better. Yeah. So we take up the challenge of chanting <laughs> for a start. Take up the challenge of chanting for and a start. And then take up other any other challenge. And as we continue to chant, that gives us the the strength to face those challenges with the Krishna conscious um, perspective. That's right, but we're coming in with, with, with Krishna conscious, right? We understand that we are also not the challenge. So we can, you know, we are, the challenge is there. And if Krishna's arranged the challenge for it to be there, then don't be mad at the challenge. Mm. It's the first okay. to grow, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Remember that Krishna, Krishna's hand is in everything. So if the challenge is in your life, Krishna's trying to talk to you through that challenge. So you have to wake up and listen and go, okay. What is my lesson here? What's Krishna telling me? What's what does Krishna want from me? And try sincerely. Remember, Krishna wants the sincerity of your heart more than anything, yeah. right? So sincerely try to overcome those challenges, and it'll, it'll actually those challenges will elevate you. Yeah, that's great. Well, it looks like um, we're on the top of the hour now. I could keep Good. talking for hours with you. It's really really inspiring for me. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah, maybe at this point you could just, um, you know, after listening to you speak, it's quite likely that devotees might like to get in touch with you. What's the easiest way that they can get in touch with you? Yeah, so um, my website is coachnickspeaks.com. So coachnickspeaks.com. And you can um, register uh, onto – I've got a mailing list where I send out some daily inspiration. Um, and you could find me uh, uh, at St. John Krishna Center. So St. And it's all spelled out, uh, St. John Krishna Center on Facebook. And you can send me a message through there uh, and you can reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. I just, you know, it's just, I, I want to know other devotees, right? It's, it, you know, it's so important that we, we associate and we connect and that we help each other in our Krishna consciousness. And when we say help each other in our Krishna consciousness, that means in all aspects of life because mm. Krishna is all aspects of life. So we should help and support each other as a community. Yeah, I really love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking with you, Prabhu, and I'm uh, looking forward to keeping in touch with you as well. And uh, we'll have to catch up again uh, a, a few months down the track and see how things are going in St. John's uh, Christian Center. Yeah, oh, I would love to. Thank <laughs> you so much, Prabhu, for inviting me. And thank you for, you know, starting the Successful Vaishnavas and doing what you're doing. It's very inspiring and wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for your um, support and look, and look forward to getting in touch again soon. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thanks for listening. To find out more, go to SuccessfulVaishnavas.com Whatever little service that anyone can do for Krishna is to be appreciated and celebrated. Just give this life to Krishna. We know that they have much more potential than they are presently using. I went to a place of relishing the activity and letting go of the result completely. You just associate with pure devotees. Then you shall be able to cross over the ocean of Nisayan.